we're going to find the inverse matrix of this matrix with complex entries. So the way to do this is we first augment this matrix with the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And then perform row reduction until we get down to a matrix in reduced row echelon form. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to make this 1. And to do that, I can multiply the row by i. So that will give me minus i squared, which is minus minus 1, and that's 1. This is just i, i, and 0. And the second row is just the same. Now I can eliminate this 2 by adding minus 2 times row 1 to row 2. And this is what I get. Now I'm going to turn this into 1 by multiplying 1 half times i. Now I'm going to make that a 0 by adding minus i times row 2 to row 1. And this matrix here is in reduced row echelon form, so we stop. Now notice that the first two columns give us the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So these two columns will give us the inverse matrix of minus i, 1, 2, 0. So the inverse of minus i, 1, 2, 0 is 0, 1 half, 1, 1 over 2 times i. We could have gotten this answer faster if we choose the elementary row operations that we perform differently. Again, let's start with this matrix here. And I'm going to swap rows 1 and 2 first. And multiply row 1 by a half. Okay. To turn this into 0, I just add i times row 1 to row 2. And this is precisely what we had before. And you can see we saved a few operations. So this example illustrates two things. First, the process of finding the inverse matrix of a matrix with complex entries. And second is, the choice of elementary operations that you perform has an impact on the total number of calculations that you need to perform.